Welcome to another underperforming video on YouTube. Today, I'll be discussing the advantages of plugging hybrid cars over fully electric vehicles. As the world is moving towards the electrification of automobiles, I felt that it was important to discuss why I feel that plugging hybrids can be the better alternative to fully electric cars. Today, I'll be exploring the unique benefits of plugging hybrids and how they can be a practical choice for many drivers. Save money on gas. Okay, before we talk about it, it is important to establish why you're looking into buying your first electric car. Is it to save money on gas? Because electric cars in general are more expensive than their internal combustion engine counterparts. A big reason for that is the battery. In an EV, the battery is the most expensive component at around twenty to $35,000. So if you're purely buying an EV to save money on gas, understand that you will need to drive that EV for a very long time before you see the financial benefits of going electric. I would like to use the example of the Hyundai Kona Electric, an EV that I recently reviewed on my channel. Make sure you check out that video. The 2023 Kona Electric is $11,000 more expensive than its gas version. Do not expect too much out of this interior because it's based on a car that is about $22,000. So some of the materials in here are gonna feel pretty cheap and they should since it's an economy car with an expensive 64 kilowatt battery. Now, keep in mind that every person's charging situation is different. For example, do you charge at home? And if so, do you have a solar panel system? If the answer to both of those questions is yes, then you will be saving a lot going electric, especially if you already have the solar system at home. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation, the average driver puts 13,476 miles per year or nearly 37 miles per day. By charging an EV with solar panels, a Tesla Model 3 driver getting 3.33 miles per kilowatt hour will spend $1,500 less per year compared to filling a gas car that gets 30 miles per gallon at around $4 per gallon. But again, if you bet a Tesla Model 3 just to save at the pump, it will take you a very long time, a couple of years, maybe even more, to offset the premium of buying an electric car versus buying just an affordable gas efficient economy car. Another reason one may opt to go electric is the idea that you will be reducing your carbon footprint. And according to research from the Fuel Institute, you may need to drive your electric vehicle for a couple of years before you can claim that you're doing less harm to the planet than someone driving just a regular gas car. In the best case scenario, when the electric vehicle is being driven in a state where most of the energy comes from low carbon sources, it will take about 19,000 miles before the EV becomes more climate friendly than the internal combustion engine car. And I have read other articles that claim that the turning point happens at around 16,000 miles and more pessimistic studies say that it is at around 60,000 miles. I am a firm believer that we must do our fair share at treating the environment kindly and reducing our carbon footprint. So I do find it lovable when people sacrifice convenience in sake of a better world. In fact, the revised federal tax credit considers some of those aspects before, at least in part before issuing you the max amount of $7,500. I would say that those are the main two reasons why more and more people are opting to go fully electric. And despite the interest in EVs, J.D. Power estimates that out of the 250 million vehicles on the road today in the United States, only 1% are electric. Extended range and flexibility. One of the main advantages of plug-in hybrid cars is their extended range and flexibility. Unlike fully electric vehicles that rely solely on battery power, plug-in hybrids combine the best of both worlds. They have a gasoline engine along with an electric motor and a battery pack. This means that if you're on a road trip and can't find a charging station, you can rely on the gasoline engine offering you the freedom to travel without range anxiety. Typically, plug-in hybrids come with highly efficient four-cylinder engines that take over once the battery is depleted. For example, the Toyota RAV4 Prime, one of the most popular plug-in SUVs, can give you up to 48 miles of electric-only range, according to Edmunds, and 34 miles per gallon on gas only for a combined range of 600 miles, which is about twice the standard for mid-size electric SUVs. But because nothing is perfect in his life, a major drawback of the RAV4 Prime is that it takes too long to recharge. 
According to Toyota, the RAV4 Prime can be fully charged in as little as 2 hours and 30 minutes with the 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger. Compare this to an electric SUV that charges about 200 miles in 15 to 25 minutes on average. Also, the flexibility that you get from being able to drive beyond the marginal range of the small battery on the plug-in hybrid, you also have the option to drive on gas only in places like California where rolling blackouts are not uncommon in the summer. When you drive a fully electric vehicle, you're just at the mercy of the local energy companies. Reduce emissions. Plug-in hybrid cars also offer a significant reduction in emissions compared to traditional gas engine cars. And while fully electric vehicles produce zero tailpipe emissions, plug-in hybrids emit less greenhouse gases than conventional gas engine cars due to their electric motor and battery. By choosing a plug-in hybrid, you're taking a step towards a greener future and contributing to a cleaner environment compared to driving a traditional internal combustion engine car. Charging convenience. Depending on your daily commute and your ability to charge your plug-in hybrid either at home or at work, you could be driving fully electric throughout the week, just like you would if you had an EV. But if you can plug it every night, you could still have the option of a very efficient car that gives you about 50 miles to the gallon, like in the case of the Prius Prime SE. With a plug-in hybrid, you have the flexibility to charge at home overnight or take advantage of the growing network of public charging stations for faster charging when needed. But again, remember that charging a plug-in hybrid is glacially slow compared to most EVs today. Cost of EVs versus plug-in hybrids. There's many offerings for EVs, but not as many plug-in hybrids on the market today. I'll use two vehicles from the same manufacturers that are sold in America today, which is the Hyundai Santa Fe plug-in hybrid and the Hyundai Ioniq 6. The Santa Fe starts at over $42,000, while the Ioniq 6 SEL is listed for $47,000 and change. But those prices don't include any potential incentives that at the time of the making of this video tend to favor the Ioniq 6. And number five is probably the most sensitive of all, the smooth transition. For drivers who are hesitant to switch to fully electric vehicles, plug-in hybrids offer a smooth transition. They provide an opportunity to experience electric driving while still having the backup of a conventional engine. Not everyone who wants to transition to an alternative energy vehicle lives in a big city and is surrounded by charging stations. So a plug-in hybrid is the perfect blend. I think that plug-in hybrids offer the best of both worlds, allowing you to enjoy the benefits of electric propulsion without compromising on range or flexibility. On a side note, I know that this is not a video of plug-in hybrids versus regular hybrids, but I would like to mention that plug-in hybrids are usually considerably more expensive than their hybrid versions. For example, there's about a $5,000 difference between the Prius hybrid and the Prius plug-in hybrid. However, the plug-in version could qualify for some incentives that the regular hybrid won't, and the plug-in version will give you access to the HOV lane in places like California. Keep that in mind. In conclusion, plug-in hybrids provide you with an extended range, reduced emissions, charging convenience, cost savings, and a smooth transition towards a greener future. Also, most of them provide you with great acceleration thanks to the combination of gas and electric power and their all-wheel drive systems. While fully electric vehicles have gained lots of popularity and excel in many aspects, plug-in hybrids offer practicality and flexibility for drivers who are not ready to fully commit to electric-only driving. Also, a good selling point for plug-in hybrids is that most of them qualify for some of the rebates and incentives for which EVs qualify. And I'll leave you a link with a complete list of all the vehicles in the United States that currently qualify for the federal tax credit of up to $7,500. The choice is yours. Are you ready to go fully electric? Perhaps you already have an electric vehicle but miss the convenience and flexibility of a nice car? I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments. That is it for today. Thank you for watching my video on the advantages of plug-in hybrid cars versus fully electric vehicles. I hope this information helps you make an informed decision when considering your next car. And I'll see you next time.